hello to everybody hope everybody's having a great weekend wherever you may be whatever you may be doing so um, here we are 30th of July 2017 no trade calls no recommendations or response for their own stuff we're here for educational purposes only so um, can you believe it you know July is already over so again let's see what's happening here you know a lot of people will be looking for some kind of a correction here we're going into seasonal weaker period um august september on the on, on the on the s p we'll have to see what's going on after we saw a little bit of uh, volatility pick up at the back end of uh, of last uh, of last week and nothing really to write home about right the big thing is we had that press below the nines and then we got a little spike but you know we're still looking for a much bigger uh, much bigger spike higher now we're going into a fairly interesting week we've got a lot of stuff on deck you know we've got a lot of data out of New Zealand and uh, Australia but we also have an RBA rate statement so that's going to be fairly interesting to see what's going on we got a lot of data across the board but we've also got that uh, super Thursday out of the UK and um, you know we'll have on Wednesday just a little taste or for unemployment with those ADP numbers and then on Friday, you know, apart from all the Canadian numbers, we've also got the non-farm payroll. So it should be, uh, you know, it should be a fairly interesting week. So just let's look at this and try and keep the video uh, not too not too long. But what is the focus again in terms of equities? We see that if you look at the SPX, right, what we had was basically again the market completing this move we discussed in one of the earlier videos right one of the areas where we thought this move could stall was at the 123 of the 150 extension and it's stalling right here in a sloppy manner at this 123 right gapped up into it after a move below couldn't get any traction but then bam 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 sells off not a lot going on right it's struggling but it seems like there's still some kind of underlying bid tone so as far as we're concerned the way we're looking at this if we get daily closes back above these highs right you know back above um the 2477s 2480s whatever you know above this highs then it looks like especially in the overnight sessions and those low liquidity ramps you'd expect the market to try and continue and try and have a date with this 2500 as long as the market doesn't close back above those levels from a day close perspective we expect that the path of least resistance is for a retracement back down into you know 2450s and then that's going to be the really interesting line you know previous resistance acting as support the really interesting line for this week right basically is are we going to ramp back up off of that and is this a construction of some kind of top or are we going to get traction or is it trying for a much bigger correction and if we see daily closes below these 2450s then we would expect that in the coming months you know at least in this august september period in one way or the other it could be in a day it could take more we'll see those 2400s print again and that that starts to get um, to be a fairly interesting level a reminder 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 off where we're trading you know a move back into those uh 2400s is only um you know not even three percent down now i know that may be shocking for some people but that is not a huge move right it can happen quick um so again if you look at the way it closed on the on the weekly you see that pretty much we went nowhere fast and again you see similar kind of um, similar kind of uh, reaction on the Nasdaq right going back on the Nasdaq weekly negative close it didn't quite close back below this the, the the previous high but again a little bit of weakness coming in a little bit of weakness coming in uh, we discussed the fact that for us the Nasdaq is still the one that's showing the most cracks and it's going to be very interesting to see how this how this trades you know are we going to get daily closes back above these previous resistance support it's pretty much the same chart across the board for more of a ramp or are we getting a bit of a correction now the interesting things in terms of these indexes is really if you look at basically how the you know the Dow's trading versus the Russell right because you see the Dow basically closing the week fairly strong right looking at it on the day last three days little gap up three positive days in a row and what about the Russell well basically if you look at the rut here 
not too hot at these highs. And if you look the past three days, after breaking above this level, BAM closes down three days negative. So this is clearly something that you need to keep an eye out for because either of these could really correct aggressively to catch up with the other. So that's gonna be something that's on the radar. But again, our call hasn't changed. We think it's time to have a healthy correction. We think there's cracks showing up. Um, you know, if you see on the Twitter feed, we've talked about a lot of the other interesting charts. Um, what is it, I, IYT, um, XLF, uh, the the transports etc cetera, etc cetera. You, you know there there's a lot there are a lot of signs of weakness across the board now something which a lot of people are going to be uh, interested in looking at still is basically dollar index and this is going to have a consequence for all the all the dollar pairs right you know a lot of people saying hey why aren't you reviewing all the all the forex pairs well you know it's uh, trying to keep the videos a little bit uh, shorter and also it we're at a point where it's all pretty much the same chart right so um, you see what's happening here. We've got weakness is continuing, and our base case is that we've got a date here with a 200 week, right? We've been talking about this for a long time, and basically it looks like it's still continuing lower, right? Now, would it be healthy to see a bounce? Sure. Do we have to get a bounce? Absolutely not, right? We discussed this, you know, all these people going on about the fact oversold, you know, it's overdue for a bounce ain't looking pretty, right? So remember, nothing has to happen. So if you're looking at it in terms of a healthy move, would a, would a bounce be healthy? Sure, you know, what you would be looking at, you'd be looking at a move back into, you know, 40, uh, 94 50s, right? Very small bounce, but still that would be healthy. And then that would be the bull bear line for, for a move all the way higher or a continuation lower, but this can go straight down. It doesn't have to bounce at all. Right. And keep in mind that even if you're looking at it in terms of, you know, this whole move down, this could easily, you know, bounce all the way back into these 98s and still be uh, be setting up for a move lower. So even though that would be a healthy way the market is moving, that would be a healthy way for the market to move. Remember that at key inflection points. It's one of those 20% of the times or 10% of the time where the market doesn't behave in a healthy manner, right? And that's when a lot of people get caught off guard. But if you look at this even on um, on something like, uh, uh, let's go on, on a one hour chart, right? On a shorter time frame, we usually don't look at this here, but you know, when you put those uh, moving averages back, you, know, you can see that the, the move down has been relentless and it's been fairly technical, right? So, you know, the selling just keeps on, um, you know, is, is just there. So it just trap shorts, more selling, more selling. So you, you, this is not the kind of thing you want to fight too aggressively. It's similar on the CAD, right? Sooner or later, it's going to bounce, but you don't want to get too aggressive. So again, that's what we're, um, what we're seeing on the dollar. And just to get back on that weekly, um, we still think there's more downside a little bounce would be healthy but you know we wouldn't be betting on it right um now what else have we got another thing we were focusing on is and you can see it's it's a similar you know it's all the same charts like what we're talking about in terms of gold yen right you know you can run but you can't hide and what's happening on gold so our base case on gold hasn't changed right we're still looking for this even if it's going to do so in a sloppy manner we think we're still in play for a move back into those November highs, election night highs, remember, we're looking for those to be tested again on all the instruments, right? Some still have a long way to go. Most of them have already tested that, but we think that's still in play. So here, this is a fairly bullish break. So what you would look at here, even on a healthy retracement, as long as we don't close back below the 1250, any move down, we would, we would expect to see buyers for a continuation to test that 1300. Again, you would not expect it in a healthy way to go knife through butter. You would expect to see some kind of a pullback if it gets back in there, but then ultimately we'd expect it to break higher, right? So gold is still in play. A lot of people looking at crude, and again, I think crude has um, caught a lot of people off guard because everybody was in the die, die, die mode. And again, you know, um, we took our profits, it looked like a little bit early, uh, but then it's not looking too bad now on the shorts. But what we said is, 
we would not be too aggressive trying to stay short here because it really looks like it's coiling higher and especially once you had this close back inside this area we said the the most prudent way for us to look at this is either we wait for a daily close back below the 47s to get short or a daily close back above the 48s would indicate that we're going back towards the 50 so we weren't too hot in trying to play inside this chop zone we like plays on a close below or a close above right and that's um you know that's playing out now keep in mind it's very bullish one two three four five positive days in a row and uh looks like if memory serves yeah it's closing above closed above the 200 for the first time so fairly bullish. Now our base case doesn't change, right? We've been talking about this for a long time. We expect any move back down here to see OPEC jawboning, blah, 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 blah. We expect any move back higher to see, you know, um, you know, the whole shale shenanigans, you know, uh, whatever. And this is going to move back down, right? So it's just a question of demand supply and OPEC jawboning this. Now, where are we so the question is are we cheap enough to buy no are we expensive enough to sell mm, getting there right getting there so what would we be focused here is either choppy action around this 50 and a failure to close above for tactical shorts that may end up being something a little bit bigger but staying very nimble or you know we need to get something hit the headlines we'd be cautious but clearly you know this is a very very interesting zone to try and and look for some kind of shorts if we trade back below the 200 again you know if we see sellers coming into the 50 we've got these trend lines coming in so it's an interesting area so clearly this is one of our uh the charts that's in focus for this uh for this week we we're not eager you know uh to do anything but we're going to be more than happy to to engage if uh if the opportunity arises right and in terms of all those other forex pairs we really just uh focus on those uh 200 weekly moving averages expect those to get tested see how action plays around that and the only one really which is where that 200 is not that interesting at the moment is yen so let's just look at that and basically what we're looking at yen this hasn't changed for us it's a fairly simple view 12 112 pivotal as long as we close below we're looking for these lows to come into play uh the only way we get bullish on yen is we get a daily close back up above the 112 anything uh on outside uh, unless we get a, a daily close above the 112 we're still expecting this to make its way lower it may be a labored move lower but we expect it to make its way lower and then maybe one more pair where the 200 is uh, is not really that that interesting right here is 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 on cable and um, what's going on on cable well basically uh, right here if you remember we're looking at um, at all these uh, numbers here basically bull bear levels and what we said is you know 126 bearish below bullish above for 128 held moved back above right knife through butter the next pivotal level hit we came back bounced bull bear line higher bull bear line right so you see how these levels are reacting extremely extremely technically right all the way from from these levels you're seeing very very nice reaction at these uh, at these 200 pip increments right so now what are we looking at going into the week well again as long as it's closing above the 130 it looks like those 132s are calling and you know only below the 130 heavy now this whole area is extremely extremely important resistance so again after this move what we would be more partial to looking for this week especially into super thursday we'd like to see the shorts being squeezed a little bit more we'd like to see a press anywhere inside this whole area you know and i know it's a wide area 135 134 uh 132 uh, and again it's a wide area but we're looking at this for possibly being an interesting area to to initiate something that could be a nice structural short coming in um so again not not too interested in playing the the shorter term dynamics unless are there the news releases because we know cable likes to uh, trends quite nicely on on the initial moves after after data but here we're more partial to waiting for thursday and seeing if we can get an interesting move back into this zone and maybe we get a decent swing short opportunity 
okay hope that was useful guys as always thank you so much for liking thank you so much for sharing um, don't hesitate to to write in if there's any chart you want me to to look at more than happy to do that and again I'm gonna try and maybe see if I can start to post some videos uh, to answer some interesting questions that are coming in on the blog um, have to find a way of doing that but again thank you so much for all the support and again see you guys on Twitter wishing everybody an awesome week take care bye bye